Hi everyone and welcome to the TLDR series for my advanced security class. For those that haven't seen my TLDR series before, basically what I'm trying to do is give a short lecture based off of my regular PowerPoints for the class, but try to keep it as short as possible for the week. Every week, I try to talk about the objectives, what I'd like you to know by the end of the week, give a quick overview of the topics for the week, and then if there is more information that you need or things you are particularly interested in, they should be in the modules in Blackboard. The advanced security class is the continuation of the information security class, and it's going to be covering some of what's in Certified Ethical Hacker, and also talking about some of the other places that you could go in security, and topics that I think are important for a second level security class for technology students. Week one, introduction. What we're going to be talking about in week one is some ethical considerations. The objectives are uh, being able to talk about some basic ethical considerations in regards to security, talk about the uses of a security audit and a pen test, and talk about some of the ways that we can detect some recon activities. So the first thing that we should think about is ethical hacking. Now, technically, there is the Certified Ethical Hacker, which is a certification that you can get. I will be talking a little bit more about certifications and places you can go after this class to get those certifications in later weeks. Ethical hacking is one of the ways that we can help companies be protected by looking at what the vulnerabilities are. Now, the Security Plus is one of the entry level certifications that you can get. That's from CompTIA, and that's a really good base level certification. Certified Ethical Hacker does need more skills. There are more things that you would be thinking about, and it's going to be using more of the tools that we're going to be talking about as this class goes. It's sort of the next level of certification if that's the career path that you're going to follow. Now, the reason that we want to think about ethical hacking is because we need to be able to figure out where the vulnerabilities are. The best way to figure out the vulnerabilities is see what would somebody else be trying to steal? So the example I always give is a burglar going through a room. So if I just told you, please go hide this incredibly valuable stack of gold doubloons. Well, you would probably maybe put it under the mattress, put it under the bed, um, maybe put it in the bottom drawer of a bureau. But if we think about the way that a burglar is going to look at the room, we would actually know that those might be some of the places a burglar is going to check first. And the way that a burglar actually goes through a bureau is the bottom drawer to the top drawer. So what we're trying to do is hide our valuables in such a way that it's gonna be one of the last places the burglar checks so that some of our other equipment would be able to catch them before they get there. Now, normally in class, we would have an ethical discussion and I would give two choices. Option one could be talking about um, a pen test and finding some data. Option two is actually related to resource allocation. And normally we would have this discussion in class. This security certificate progression chart, um, you might not be able to see this as big as you would be able, we'd like to. Um, this was actually posted on Reddit. This was current as of November 2019. I'm sure that they have a more current one. This was the most updated one that I could find when I was making the PowerPoint, but I would encourage you to go to the subreddit on cybersecurity because this is a really valuable resource. Now, what you can actually see looking at this is, for example, the Security Plus can actually be used for people that are going for security architecture, management, and security analysis. Certified Ethical Hacker tends to be more offense-defense, so blue team, red team, purple team type of thing. 
But if you are interested in some of the other more specialized certifications that you could potentially go for, this chart is actually really helpful for that so you could see what the next steps might be. Now, um, when we talk about vulnerabilities, there's a vulnerability assessment and then there's also penetration testing or pen testing. Now, when we are looking at vulnerabilities, what we're trying to do is find our starting point. Different vulnerabilities are going to be shown in different ways. We might have red team, blue team. We might have... Um, you know, different types of scans that we're going to do. And as we're doing all of these, looking at the way the company is set up and the rules that are set up, we also want to be thinking about threat assessment. What threat assessment means is how serious is this threat? Is this something that is a really serious problem if it gets out or not so serious? Let's say, for example, we're looking at a company that has a lot of customer data. Names getting out, while not good, isn't necessarily going to be incredibly destructive. However, medical histories, that could be really destructive if it gets out. So we need to think about how protected the information is, how likely it might be that that information gets exposed, and how much effort we should put into making sure that we are protecting that information. Now, when we talk about security, what you'll sometimes see referred to is red team, blue team, and purple team. The idea being, if we have an internal, we have a company, uh, let's say Acme Corporation, if Acme Corporation is big enough, they are going to have their own internal security teams. One of the things that has come up is the security teams might be red teams or blue teams. Red teams are going to be the attackers. They are the ones that are trying to emulate the black hats and trying to do what the black hats would do to get into the company. The blue team is trying to defend against the red team and attackers. Now, one of the things that we've actually seen in the last couple of years, uh, this is being recorded in January of 2020, 2021, I'm sorry. Um, and so one of the things we've seen in the last couple of years is actually purple teams. The idea behind purple team is Either we have a team that helps red and blue cooperate because the adversarial nature of red teaming and blue teaming can sometimes make it hard for the two teams to work together. We could also have a purple team be sometimes they are doing red team activities and sometimes they are doing blue team activities. But it is really important that we have the red team and the blue team talking to each other and working together a lot because that's how we're going to get the best security for the company. Now, a security audit is not the same thing as a pen test. A security audit is where we're actually looking at the security policies that our example company, Acme Corp, has. We want to look at these internal policies. We want to see how well they match best practices. We want to see the type of documentation, how good the documentation is. And then we want to figure out what needs to be updated. Now, these security audits are basically from the internal view, sort of going through and combing through everything to try to see what's working and what isn't working. Now that isn't the same thing as a pen test. A pen test is usually done by an outside contractor and it's from the outside looking in. So we aren't looking at the internal policies. We're saying, okay, I've never worked for Acme Corporation. I don't know anything about Acme Corporation. What can I find out? And we're coming at it from an outside perspective. So we're trying to see what an outsider would be able to see about our company, Acme Corporation. So pen testing is going to be generally an outside person coming in and they are specifically looking at what's going on at this particular point in time, this snapshot in time. So it's not vulnerabilities that are always there. It's just when we tested, this is what we found. Now, a lot of times what we'll see with pen testing 
is um, that is something that's done maybe once a year. A very large report is written. It is turned into the company. And then you'll come back the next year or another company will come back, give another pen test, and find other things. A pen test is not usually... Yay, they found nothing. It's, they found some things. We've plugged up those holes. That's great. Let's find some new issues. One of the things that's really important about pen testing is that this can get into legal hot water very quickly. So it's very important that pen testing is only done with proper authorization, proper signatures, and generally lots of lawyers. So one of the things that you want to be careful about as you are going through this class or this TLDR series is making sure that you're paying very close attention when I say the safe way to be able to try something. In some cases, because these YouTube videos are public, I'm actually going to be skipping over some things because there is no way for me to safely have you try this if you aren't on campus with me under supervision. So I might be skipping over some things. Now for pen testing or ethical hacking, what you want to think about is if you are hired to do this, what that would end up looking like and sort of how that would end up working. But it is really important that you think about the ethical portion of ethical hacking. This isn't, you know, he, he, he hack things. It's how can I help this company protect themselves? We have what's called the rules of engagement. When we have pen testing, we have to think about who can say yes. So we can't have some random person, you know, the janitor can't come and say, hey, could you please pen test Acme Corporation for me? We have to think about who can say yes, who can hire for pen testing. We have to make sure that we have what's called the scope clearly spelled out. The scope is what is allowed and what isn't allowed. So if we have a company and they have a website, if they aren't managing their own website, is that in scope? If they are managing their own website, but the website is hosted by a cloud provider, let's say AWS, is that in scope? Which parts of that cloud scan would be in scope? Part of scope is also deciding when the test is so that we have a start date and an end date. We need to think about who is able to do the test and what is actually being turned in at the end. Generally, it's going to be a very large report that's going to get turned in at the end that has all of the findings from the test. We need to think about who's being told a test is happening. We need to think about how the cloud is going to affect testing because a lot of companies have been moving more towards third-party providers for things. And once we start getting into third-party providers, that's going to turn into a whole new set of questions because while we might have permission to work on a pen test for Acme Corporation, we don't have permission to work on a pen test for AWS that hosts things for Acme Corporation. So it's really important that we think about those things. We need to think about the laws that are applying here. And so one of the examples is if the company is in California, branches are in four other states, pen tester comes from Massachusetts, what laws apply? If you don't know the answer to that, then I would encourage you to research it because that's actually really important. I have also included a link. This was a get out of jail free card and basically what happened was a couple of pen testers managed to land themselves in jail because they did not have the proper documentation on them and it actually turned into a much larger issue. So when we talk about pen testing we have to think about scope. Scope is going to include the time frame of the test, the types of tools that we are allowed to use during the test, the kind of cooperation you might have or might not have, the data that's being gathered, who's allowed to see it, and how are you covering your tracks. So if you are accidentally doing something that you shouldn't, did you accidentally poke a hole in their defenses? We also have to think about what's being tested. For example, um, if you go read the article that I was just talking about with the get out of jail free card, um, physical locations may or may not be part of the pen test. So is the physical location in the scope for, yes, people can do this. No, nobody should ever do this. All of those things need to be very specifically spelled out. Same with things like IP ranges. 
So if there are specific IP ranges that are allowed or not allowed or may be allowed, everything needs to be spelled out very, very clearly in the scope and everybody has to agree to it. It's kind of like coming up with house rules for a board game. So this was my first TLDR for my advanced security class. The rest of them will be coming out on a hopefully faster schedule. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.